Yennefer's so amazing. Every time she sees her, she can't stop crying. Um, <laughs> oh, she does my freaking bonds in as well, considering how much of a like cold hard ass she was in season one. Now she she's like turned into Discovery season two. She just can't stop fucking crying every time she sees her. Yeah, um, to put this just for you, Mauler, um, Yennefer kind of sacrificed herself at the end of the first season to stop like an invading army, and it was uh -huh. assumed that she died because she just disappears. And so the first like few episodes of season two, every fucking character is just moping around like, oh my god, Yennefer died. She was such a hero. We she was beautiful. She was brave. She was awesome. Like characters even tell that directly to her when she's just like berating them. Oh, the Captain um, Marvel treatment, I see. Exactly, yeah. And, like, I kind of pointed out in my review, there's such a thing as, like, show, don't tell. We we get that she was a hero and that she may have sacrificed herself to save others. That's self-evident just by seeing what happens on screen. You don't have to literally tell us that she was brave for doing that. We understand. So it's just... It's so redundant and it's so fucking patronizing. Like, we literally have to be told what to think about this character. Um, and it, it's That's it's a weird of today though. It's typical. It of is, today. and it, it's a weird thing with characters like this. Whether it's like you said, Mo, or Captain Marvel, or whether it's Michael Burnham from Star Trek, um, or whoever else you want to pick, like this, they, they they're surrounded by people that are constantly telling them how awesome they are and how brave they are and how special they are. Uh, and it just feels so unnecessary. And every time it happens, it makes me hate the character a bit more because the, hmm. the writers have such a fucking hard on for them. Um, it's just really frustrating from a, like just a storytelling point of view. Yeah, that's, that's I, I, I wonder. If just, oh way. god, Batwoman does it all the time. Like, is a bit of insecurity from the writer, maybe? Like, uh oh, I might not have proven my character's X. I better have someone say it. It's like, ugh. do you think it's it's some element of like either they weren't showing enough attention when they were kids or they were maybe shown too much attention by their parents and like they they think that's just how real people act you know their parents like told like oh you've shot on the carpet oh that was amazing well done that's the best turd i've ever seen congratulations just special oh. you know and if they grow up with that is that just what they expect from life they expect to be praised for everything that happens and everything they do and they just they have to reflect that in their writing that's how we introduce people, right? If we had someone new, brand new to like the, you know, everyone had met them today on this stream, and they're like, "Oh, hi, you know, oh, drinker, it's good to meet," and then I go, "Yeah, there's a drinker. He's uh, he's courageous, intelligent. He knows exactly what to do in any situation. We're all very proud of him. There's nothing he can't do." Yeah, in in reality, you say like, "This is drinker. He's a drunken, sleazy moron." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, honestly, we highlight it for fun, but you do miss out on the. There's, there's a chemistry that goes away when you have characters just be like, they are smart and intelligent and clever and good. You're like, yeah. okay. It, we, I yeah, real people. It, it stems from an inability to write that because they don't know how to write that. If, if you look at the way that um, alleged heroes are portrayed now, uh, they're not heroes, they're villains. Uh, they tend to to have a, a, a villainous um, origin. Uh, they tend to be like envious of somebody uh, or want to prove that they're better than somebody or something. Uh, they uh, do villain. I mean, look, just look at Wanda for goodness' sake. Wanda Vision is a, is mm. a prime example of that filtering in. But in like in comics, in recent times in comics, like Ironheart's origin is uh this is meant to be a hero is her school teacher said that she could do anything and she was mad at a school teacher because she's black that she wasn't being repressed so she literally shouts at a school teacher to say tell me something i can't do and she's like fine uh you'll never be tony stark and she's like right i'm gonna be better than <laughs> tony stark it's like that's not a hero's fucking origin that's yeah. the origin of, of, of t the next super villain, yeah. Super villain for Tony like Stark. And it's it, interesting it, in in Witcher, like because um, in season two, again for Mauler, like Yennefer loses her magic powers, so she's no longer able to do magic, which she's relied on most of her life, um, and it's given her most of her um, like it's basically always an out for her if she gets into a difficult situation. She's lost that, um, and. Uh, 
And her quest really is to try and regain it throughout the season. She's got to find a way to get it back. Um, and she says to, to more than one person, like, I want my power back. I deserve it. Deserve. Yeah, it's like, hmm. anytime someone says it. that they deserve something, it immediately oh. makes me think, no, you fucking don't, if that if that's your attitude. Yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable, isn't it? Because you, I guess you almost want your heroes to be saying, like, you know, maybe my power isn't me. Maybe, uh, maybe I... Um, I'm more than that, and maybe that power is too much. You know, just stuff to to, to yeah, build up instead it. of being like, maybe yeah, or, give me back my power. Yeah. Or, or you know, <laughs> yeah, I want to, you know, I want to do good with it, or um, yeah. you know, I'm I've got to combat this big threat that's arisen. I need my power in order to do that because I'm I'm nothing without it. Um, it's that whole, um, I, I guess, like what Tony said to um, to Spider Man. Or to Peter Parker, sorry. Like, if you need that suit, like, if you're not anything without it, then you don't deserve to wear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which um, was a great moment in in very poignant moment. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, it's part of. I think they did try to do that a bit in. Uh, because nothing remember without the Thor, suit, have, then Thor had to earn Thor power in his movie, and Iron Man's whole point is that he needs to have that the suits in his control, not like the government's or any other particular individual, because it's. A matter of using the power correctly. Um, Steve, like the whole reason he was chosen was because it's it's his personality that giving the power to is important instead of just anybody. You know, a lot of these stories are about putting the power to the right person as opposed to the person who's like, I want power. It's like that's yeah, what we that's call the, a palpatine. <laughs> like, that's, yeah, that's a yeah. that's like wanting power for power's sake. That's villainous shit right yeah, there. Uh, yeah, again, craving power is villainous stuff. A hero uh earns it or has it thrust upon them. Uh, a villain is the one who craves it and demands it. 